Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have a rant for you today. But before I jump into that, please be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Share our content, like, comment. The comments are the lifeblood of this channel. So we want that like, hit that like, hit that comment. Whatever you got to do to help us push through this algorithm. We're doing great right now. We're continuing to grow. We, we got, we we're almost hitting a million views in six months, which is really amazing in our opinion. We love it. We're very excited. We got to keep doing more. We got to keep doing more and more and more and bringing more and more content on a day-to-day basis. Can't wait for football to start as well next at the end of this month because that's I love college football, so I'm going to be talking lots of college football. I can promise you that. Um, NFL, we'll talk about it, but I'm not a, as big of an NFL fan. Because I'm a Dolphins fan, as you see the helmet in the back, back, my background. So, yeah, the Dolphins are always a massive disappointment. They'll start off pretty decently, probably. And then they'll fall apart in the, in the month of December and give me the, the typical December birthday present, since my birthday is in December. Uh, the, the, the December disappointment, because <laughs> we do that almost every year. That said, let's jump right in. <sighs> that was about a week ago. L. Duncan had jumped on and and, and criticized. Um, she criticized Cheryl Swoops, which was very exciting to see, because it showed a little. It showed a backbone of not just running with what is being done at ESPN and, and and the narratives that have been pushed. She criticized her, which was wonderful. But, 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 she apologized. She apologized for criticizing her. Newsflash, folks. Just because you criticize someone and you might hurt their fucking feelings because they don't like what you have to say doesn't mean you have to apologize to them when they come crying to you saying, I didn't like that you said that. Guess what? I shouldn't have had to say it if you had been an honest person and not a hater and not a nonstop hater of an individual. Everyone sees what Cheryl Swoops has been doing. Everyone sees the lies that she has told. Let's start off. We could, we, let's, let's rehash. What was it? March? February or March of this year? She's on Gill's Arena. And she says, Caitlin Clark is 25. Caitlin Clark needs a fifth year to break the scoring record. Caitlin Clark is taking 40 shots a game. That was in one podcast. She gave you three separate lies. Lies. Cheryl Swoops isn't dumb. Or maybe she is. I don't know anymore. But those were lies. Those were factually incorrect. It's funny how the same people that will go after Donald Trump for the shit he says will not go after people, that <laughs> won't go after Cheryl Swoops for the shit she says. Obviously, they're completely different human beings and they're completely different parts of the sections of life. One's running for president. But when you lie, you lie. Lying is lying. You have an influence on the, you have an influence on the public at large. Cheryl Swoops is the first ever WNBA player. First. Cheryl Swoops is highly regarded in the history of women's basketball. Cheryl Swoops was a great women's basketball player. So what Cheryl, when Cheryl Swoops says something, people listen. People pay attention to it. People actually think she's telling you the truth. Because the fact is, is that most people don't know dick about women's basketball. They don't know the history. They don't know the stats. They don't know who's good. They don't know who's bad because they don't watch it. But that changed in the last year or two with Caitlin Clark at Iowa. That she changed the way it's viewed. She changed the way ESPN promotes it. 
but you're going to jump on a podcast and have three dung-dungs next to you who don't want to say a word to critique you and say that you're wrong, like you're flat fucking wrong, and they wouldn't do it? Come on, man. They wouldn't do it. They let her get away with that bullshit. And they've been running this, oh, it should be a, a tie for Rookie of the Year bulk. Get the fuck out of here. A tie for Rookie of the Year. In what world would you think that it's a tie for Rookie of the Year? Well, let's go from there. She says that. <sighs> then, God, she said other shit after that. I don't even remember. It's been so much because I've had done multiple videos on her on this shit. But now recently, she said that Caitlin Clark will be a starter on her all-star team. I thought she wasn't good enough. I thought she needed all these things to be good. Oh, she wasn't physical enough. There was a, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. She's a bully. That was the next thing that she said about her. She called her a bully. She called the 150 fucking two-pound skinny-ass white girl a bully. Holy shit. If Caitlin Clark is the bully, my God, the people she's bullying are big-ass wusses. Because she's not a damn bully. Oh, yeah. She pushes off on every shot she takes. That was the other, other nonsensical lie that she spit out. Lie after lie after lie after lie. And now she goes back into the newest nonsense that she said recently. And I did a video on it. I got to refresh my memory on it. Um, Cheryl swoops the comments on Caitlin Clark, just so I can specifically correct. Oh, my word. What did she say this time? I forgot. I should have been prepared. That's my bad. I apologize, folks. Um, oh, yeah. This time it was that Angel Reese is the rookie of the year because the Indiana Fever would make the playoffs without Caitlin Clark. And that the Chicago Sky would not make playoffs without Angel Reese. And then it was also that the uh, that that Katie Lou Samuelson was more valuable to the Indiana Fever than Caitlin Clark. Are we serious? Is this for real? I mean, is this for real? We, we know it can't possibly be for real, but that's what she said. And anyone with sense knows that the Indiana, Indiana Fever might not have four wins if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark. And they would not be making the playoffs. They wouldn't have a chance and should have making the playoffs. She even said they have a better roster. No, they don't. No, they don't. The only two people that would start for Indiana, if you, entered, if you mix the two rosters together, would be Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark. The other three positions would be would be Kennedy Carter, Angel Reese, and Camila Cardoso. So three fifths of the starting lineup, if you put those teams together, would be members of the, of the Chicago Sky. Facts. Facts suck. So Swoop says all this, and I'm gonna. Pop open this video. They're out, they're out here dominating. Now, someone did take a loss in the basketball world this week, though. And I love her, but she's wrong here. Cheryl Swoops, former WNBA player. We all know that. Current host of Queen of the Court podcast. She had some thoughts. She's had some thoughts previously about Caitlin. She would later have to apologize of those thoughts being uninformed, taking she shoots like 60 shots a game. Just being a little bit inflammatory and critical without any actual analysis. And she apologized for that during... Uh, the women's college season, and she's now stepped in it again by saying that Indiana is in the playoffs right now without Caitlin Clark. By saying that, like, Katie Le Lou Samuelson's really more integral in terms of her two-way ability than Caitlin, and also saying that, and I, I don't I don't besmirch her for this because lots of people are making arguments for whether they think that it is Angel Reese or Caitlin Clark that should be Rookie of the Year. I've said that I think it's Caitlin, um, but that I could understand someone making an argument for the other. It's not hate to make an argument for Angel Reese. So I don't take any issue with that part. But the other part 
it just feels like there is something there and I'm not really sure what is not connecting with Cheryl and why. And I don't know if that some of that is driven in sort of the hurt that she felt from the fan base or some of the attacks that were leveled at her mm -hmm. after she had those comments a few months ago, but this feels really, really, really off par. This just doesn't feel right at all. And it is starting to feel a little bit like hate from Cheryl who just in this particular space, stop. Like, like if, 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 the, sure. if the fever who want to she deserved those attacks. She deserved every single fucking attack she got. She was lying. That's the problem. If you have an opinion about something and you feel a certain way, that's okay. If you can back up what you state with data, with facts. The problem happens when you just randomly spout off bullshit that's a fucking lie and you keep lying, lie after lie after lie, and then you're bothered because you got attacked for lying? Like, what? You're mad because you got attacked for lying. You lied. Fucking ridiculous. You're bothered by being attacked for, you know, I'd be bothered by being attacked for telling the truth. But if I'm fucking attacked for lying, I should expect it, shouldn't I? A handful of games last year are in the playoffs this year. Then you have to understand that a large part of that is it Caitlin is Clark it. and Aaliyah Boston. Either one of them. I would have accepted either yeah. one of those. No, Aaliyah Boston is not why they'd be in the playoffs this year. She's a part of why they'd be in the playoffs. The reason they would be in the playoffs is Caitlin Clark. Because if they, returned, if they had returned the exact same team, the team would have been exactly the same. Because the skill level on that team is not good. The skill level on the Indiana, Indiana Fever is not good. Lexi Hull has no skill. Katie Lou Samuelson has no skill. And Alyssa Smith has no skill. Kelsey Mitchell's tremendously skilled, but tremendously selfish. And he's not exactly an intelligent basketball player because she never seems to understand how to do a backdoor cut. Aaliyah Boston's range is literally 10 feet. Yeah, she makes a, a three here and there, but she's not handling the ball. Erica Wheeler's not good. Like, th th these, these are players that are in their rotation. They're not good. Christy Wallace is no longer even in the rotation. She was a starter for, like, the first 15 games. They're not good. They're, 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 ta they're void of talent. If Caitlin Clark was not on this team, this team would have no chance in hell of making the playoffs. Kelsey Mitchell, too. I mean, listen, and you are way closer to the space, um, to the WNBA space, as I am. So I understand you will cross paths with Cheryl Swoop. So you have to be sort of... See, that's a problem for me. What he just said, there's a big fucking problem with me. I got a big fucking problem with that. Humongous. You cross space with Cheryl Swoops. So you have to be very careful in how you deliver it. No, you fucking don't. No, you don't. Have you guys not watched NBA on TNT and the shit that Shaq says, that Kenny Smith says, that Charles Barkley says? It is constructive fucking criticism. If you can't take constructive criticism, you should not be playing sports. You should not have, you shouldn't, and you should, or you shouldn't be talking about sports. I did, I take, criticism on every post I make from somebody. I don't care. Criticize me. I don't give a shit. Call me whatever name you want to call me. I mean, I'm, I'm bald. I'm fat. All these different things. Call me whatever you want to call me. I don't give a damn. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It just shows your lack of intelligence if that's what you resort to in, in trying to have a dialogue with me. Because if you want to have a dialogue with me, we can debate all day. But when your first thing is to jump in and, and, and call me names or call me out of my name, it just shows that you have a certain lack of intelligence that prevents you from having an actual adult-like conversation. So when he says that, I got a big problem with that because you shouldn't have to fucking hold your tongue about what you think about what someone's doing because he's done it over and over and over again. This isn't a one-time thing. This is the third time in three separate fucking podcasts or interviews where she said some fuck shit about Caitlin Clark and it's flat fucking lying. She keeps doing it. She keeps doing it, and, 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 and yet you're supposed to worry about crossing spaces with her? You don't think that freaking Stephen A. Smith crosses spaces with damn near every player in the NBA? 
and the stuff that he says about them, he crosses paths with them all the time. If he has to worry about crossing, what are they going to do? Are they going to punch him? No, they're not. Because guess what? If they punch him, he's going to sue their ass and take them for millions of dollars in stupidity fees. Because <laughs> you don't punch someone because they have an opinion about you. As long as they're not calling you out of your name, what is the problem? If you can't take criticism, don't play sports or don't talk about sports. But this crap where I have, she has to worry about crossing paths, miss me with the bullshit. Cautious the way we deliver this about a Hall of Famer. I agree with that. Cheryl Soups, but she is L tripping. What is she talking about? The Indiana Fever won 13 games last year and they were an 11 seed, or they would have, they were, they finished 10th out of 12 teams. Right now, they are an eight seed. They no, they're actually the, the seven seed. They're not the eight seed. They're the seven with... seed. So they're actually three spots ahead of where they were last year. They're actually three or four wins ahead of where they were last year. This year, they're probably going to finish with 20 wins. They're going to finish 500 at the very least. They're, they're 11 and 15 right now. My guess, they go 10 and four down the stretch and they finish 21 and 19. That's my opinion. Why? Because Caitlin Clark is going to have had three weeks of rest to relax. And they're going to practice. And because of that practice time, they're going to get, they're going to have more chance, more time to get better. Half a season to go to get their total wins from last year. Caitlin Clark leads the team in every statistical category, but rebounding. There's, I don't understand what corner you can look at with this argument she's making and be like, you know what? There's some there's some validity there. That's insane. You could make the argument that the Chicago Sky are worse than they yes, were. Yes, the last Chicago year. Sky last year is a worse team, team this year. That's crazy. And it was last cringe. year. That's a fact. So anyway, it's not an I know opinion. That compartmentalized. That's the problem into, that people have. It's not a fucking opinion. It's discussion. a fact. Reese, Caitlin Clark. That's they won 18 but games last whole, year. This whole pretty sure that's what they were. They won 18. Beat. I'm pretty <laughs> sure very much they won 18 games last year. To Caitlin Clark is insane, dude. Um, they were and again, 18 and I think, 22. Like, you know, so much respect for Cheryl 18 22. Who she is a person that they won, they won overcome, 10 this year. The player that she was, they're going to finish um, with less wins this year than last year. And certainly, so many of these young women stand on her shoulders, but this just doesn't seem built in reality or fact. I, you know, no. like if you want to make a really critical analytical argument and you want to support it with research or whatnot, I get that, or even just support it with your own opinion. But this just feels it, it feels mm, like it's just not true um it just feels like you're intentionally trying to minimize who she is and, and okay i'm gonna stop it right there i don't care anymore like, like that's that's i'm done with that the point being end of the day um hell duncan apologize for that for those comments why are you apologizing what is going on here that you're apologizing i i, I don't get it you're an anchor on she didn't bad mouth Elle Duncan did not say anything wrong there. Nothing. But she just bent over and took it. Because Cheryl Swoops probably sent her a text. I'm just for D Duncan issued an apology to Swoops a day later, explained that she failed to listen to Swoops' comments in full before discussing them publicly on her show. I listened to them. I listened to them in full. I don't have to watch the entire damn show to hear the comments that were made on that specific topic. Don't give me the, miss me with the garbage, man. I did the thing that you aren't supposed to do. I reacted to Cheryl Swoops' comments about Caitlin Clark based on quotes pulled for me by producers in the rundown. Now, if you did that and you didn't actually listen to it at all, then yes, you have a problem. That's a mistake. That is a mistake. As a journalist, you should never do that. You need to listen to that shit before you talk about it. You need to make sure you listen to it before you talk about it, because that's a rule right there. You cannot comment on something that you didn't actually listen to. Don't rely on producers to provide you with quotes. I listened to the entire fucking thing. No. No. Swoops said what she said. Swoops said what she said. And it was some fuck shit. And and then uh, Duncan says I should have listened to the show as in Swoops podcast. 
The same thing I implored CC fans to do when they were attacking me a couple of months back for hating on her. I hate that I've sent more vitriol her direction and I'm taking this big L. I texted Cheryl the same thing. I will do better. I'm sorry. Fuck that. I do not know what the fuck you're apologizing for. Like, get out of here. Producers didn't push this narrative. Cheryl Swoop said these things on her podcast. She said them. I watched it. Why are you apologizing? You embarrassed yourself by apologizing. You embarrassed yourself. She flat said that Angel Reese is the rookie of the year because... They will, they'll they make the playoffs with her, but Indiana will be just as good without Caitlin Clark, and they'd make the playoffs too. You're wrong, Cheryl. You've been wrong. You're wrong all the time. You keep on making up shit. I'm convinced that you don't watch WNBA. I'm convinced at this point. Because if you had been, you'd know that what you just said is completely, completely ridiculous. But L. Duncan, God damn, man. I complimented you a couple weeks back on the fact that you still admit that Caitlin Clark's your rookie of the year. I greatly appreciate that for you from you. But you saying sorry to this fucking idiot Cheryl Swoops? Because she can't take some fucking public criticism from a colleague? Well, you're not a colleague. She doesn't work for ESPN. So you just happen to walk past her? It's weak, man. That, that shit's weak as fuck. That shit, that bothers me to no end. That you would apologize to that woman for having an opinion. It's funny. She gets to have an opinion, even though it's all lies. And she's never apologized to anything that she has said about Caitlin Clark. Not a damn thing. Calling her a bully was a fucking lie. But you know what? You can say she's a bully and that's your opinion. No problem. Saying that she pushes off on every shot she takes, that's a lie. That is a flat, bold-faced lie. But beyond that, have you watched basketball, Cheryl? Have you watched LeBron play? James Harden, Steph Curry, Michael Jordan? They all push off in, 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 in certain instances and get away with it. Just like you did. I got a video that I posted of you doing it in college in the national championship game. Blatantly pushed off, arm extended, and you hit the shot. They didn't call an offensive foul on you. Call them a, someone a bully because... The, they push off. On Man, miss me with the nonsense. You got my opinion on this. L. Duncan, you should never have apologized for this bullshit. And I, and I hope to God that ESPN producers and executives didn't fucking reach out to her and tell her to apologize. Because if they did, that's disgraceful. I don't know why there, there, there is this narrative to push Angel Reese so hard and knock down everything Caitlin Clark does. On this network? I don't know why. Because Caitlin Clark is why people are watching the network right now during baseball season. And I love baseball. But people don't watch baseball. Not like they used to. So what's filling our TV right now? Caitlin Clark is. That's all I got. Be sure to leave a comment. We love those comments. Like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now.